What's going on everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So plain and simple, cutting right to the chase, this week's video is going to be our standard ISO performance and exposure recovery test. Only this time, it's with the Panasonic Lumix GH6. And if you stumbled across this video, I probably don't have to tell you that the GH6 is Panasonic's newest addition to their GH line of cameras. And the GH6 gave us some seriously awesome updates coming from the GH5 and the even later GH5 II. Actual 6K video modes, 4K at 120p, a lot of great anamorphic video support and a pretty overlooked one real full actual vlog not vlog l that we got with the gh5 and the gh5s and stuff real vlog and also a new dynamic range boost mode in the gh6 which i have a quick spiel about in a minute and it's going to be those last two features that concern us today because in this video i'm going to shoot every single iso value the gh6 has to offer on our chart right here and then i'm going to hop in front of the camera and we're going to see how the gh6 is going to handle over and under exposure and we're also going to do this in its flat color profile and in log. And before we start, I did say I had one quick note about this dynamic range boost mode on the GH6. The GH6's sensor has dual gain circuitry. That's nothing new there. Tons of cameras have that. What you can do on the GH6 is activate this D range boost mode, and that is going to combine the use of both of those sets of circuitry that are usually just used like one or the other. It's going to combine those, use them both simultaneously to get you the highest amount of exposure value within the video, aka D range. And so for the ISO performance test, I actually turned this off because you can't have the D range boost mode and the extended ISO range mode on. And that kind of defeats the purpose of that test because I want to check out every single value. However, in the exposure recovery test, I did have this dynamic range boost on. But another thing to keep in mind, that D range boost mode is actually going to give you a different base ISO because it's combining those circuitries, which I'll explain as we go along. So anyways, enough chatter. Let's dive into this ISO performance test. First, we are checking out the flat color profile. So the exposure here was metered right down the middle in camera. And as I change ISO, I'll be countering that change with shutter speed. So if that bulb in the corner here gets a little funky, that's why. And we're also in 4K 24P in the all I 10-bit 422 recording mode and again with extended ISO on and D range boost off and in extended ISO mode the first three values 50 64 and 80 are categorized as the low values all of which are supremely clean hardly any recognizable noise although some weird stuff is going on with like the white levels I think in these I'm not sure I might have messed something up in camera 100 is the first regular value outside of the low values and it's also the camera's base ISO when D range boost mode is off. Otherwise, when D range boost mode is on, the base ISO is 800 and that is also the lowest value. But with that off, we get all of these low values, 100, 200, 400. And as we move up, there is a tiny little jump in noise to each value, but it's like super negligible at this point. And everything is still totally, totally clean. And this is the case for the next couple of stops. 800 looking perfect. 1600 also looking perfect, but the noise is steadily gaining, really only noticeable if you look at that 300% zoom window. I'd say 3200 is where the noise starts to become visible on the whole scale of the image, but again, really subtle. 4000. 5,000, same thing, noise is just picking up a little bit. 6,400, the noise is maybe starting to become a problem. It's still very neat though, and the chroma hasn't shifted at all, but it's definitely noticeable. At 8,000, this image is just getting to be like a little bit grittier but I wouldn't say the noise is distracting yet at this point. But there is a considerable jump from eight to 10,000. The noise starts to get pretty wild at 10,000. Still looks pretty decent. The colors are starting to fall apart a little bit here as well, but this is probably nothing a little noise reduction couldn't handle. And 12,800 is the highest value here. And there's also a steep jump in noise between 10,000 and 12,800, but again, still not too crazy. Things are definitely a bit muddied, a bit less contrast, 
empty, less saturated, and that noise could definitely be distracting for sure. It's really kind of dancing around and getting blotchy. And 12,800 is the highest value across the board, regardless of extended ISO mode, D-range boost mode, or color profile, it's always 12,800. There are no super high values here. So with that being said, here's the same ISO performance test, but in V-Log. And again, the D-range boost mode is off here, but the extended ISO mode is on. And since we're in log, I kept this test metered at 1.3 stops overexposed in camera. So when this V-Log to 709 LUT goes on, the noise is much more well managed. So here we also get three low values, but this time they are 125, 160, and 200. All of them are total perfection when it comes to noise. And here, ISO 250, just like in the flat profile, the first value outside of those low values is the base ISO. Otherwise, in V-Log with D-Range Boost Mode on, the base is 2000. And 250 is super duper clean, of course, it's the base, which is the case for the next couple of values. You'll see a really small yet gradual increase in noise between each, but otherwise, nothing to speak of. 800 looking perfect. 1600 looking perfect as well. The noise is barely picking up though if you keep an eye on that zoomed in window, but don't strain yourself. Same with 2000 and 2500. These are both still looking really great here, no complaints. There is a bit of a jump from 2500 to 3200 though in terms of noise but I'm really splitting hairs here. 3200 still looks great. And this is where it started to get a little muddy in the flat test. It's keeping up really well here. At 4000, you might now be able to see a little danciness happening in the select shadow areas of the chart where it really gets kind of on the fringe of being a true shadow and just like regular. But again, it's really hard to see and this still looks awesome. At 5000, we're gradually stepping that noise up Still looking very clean. At 6400, there is now a subtle blanket of noise that's sweeping over the image on the whole scale. Still mostly the shadows, but it's noticeable. Same to be said about 8000, that noise is still growing. Still really kind of maintained to the shadow areas though, and it's not totally distracting yet. 10,000 is where things started to get bad out of log in the flat profile, and here 10,000 looks just a hair better than that. It is starting to fall apart here a bit as well. This is kind of like the tipping point. There's just some of that chroma noise showing up now as well. It's kind of an even mix between green and magenta, so I guess it balances out to be even, but this is holding up better in log than it did in the flat profile for sure. And finally for 12,800, which is the highest value, the noise is for sure getting a bit wild again. But again, something that I think could maybe be remedied with a quick pass through noise reduction. And it's a bit of a bummer it cuts off here because I think at this rate, the further values in the sequence, I think 25,600, 40,000, and maybe even 64,000 could have looked pretty pretty clean if things kept going the way they were going, but who knows. All right, now moving on to our exposure recovery test, and we're gonna switch up some stuff here. So now I have the dynamic range boost mode on, which means the extended ISO mode is off now, and the base ISO outside of log with D-range boost mode on is 800, so that's where we are going to start out in the flat profile in underexposure. So the image in the middle will remain the correctly exposed image as according to the camera. The image on the left will be the test image and the image on the right will be that same test image clip but recovered back to the best of my ability. One stop under came back pretty much perfectly. Two stops under still pretty much perfect. I had to make some slight adjustments to the tint of the shadow and highlights here but pretty good. Three stops under is still good like values and info loss wise, but we're definitely getting weird kind of color stuff happening here. I had to saturate certain parts of this and desaturate other values, and I had to shift around some hues a little bit, so getting kind of weird. 
At four stops under, we're now considerably lossy. A lot of the shadow info is officially lost in this video. And bringing it back up results in some pretty nasty noise. Also, the color is getting really hard to manage here. We're walking that awkward thin line between like warm and cool, but also green and magenta where every change I make just makes it worse in the other direction. So grading this was very tricky. And finally at five stops under, you know, considering the image on the left, this did pretty well, but of course this image is just looking really muddy and weird. The noise is really prominent and I tried my best to match the color, but there's really not a lot you're working with with that level of loss. All right, so let's check out overexposure in the flat profile. Well, one stop over, Nothing to be said, totally crushed it. We dive off pretty fast though when we get to two stops over. As you can see, that highlight area on my forehead and nose are completely gone, irrecoverable. And I've already had to saturate this quite a bit amongst other tedious color adjustments. At three stops over, we have some severe loss going on, the point of no return in terms of information recovery. And pretty much from here on out, there really isn't much to say. Four and five stops over, there's just extreme info loss. All of the info in this picture is contained within the highlights and you're just not getting those anymore. So what you're left with is just horrible. So compared to the underexposure test, clearly the flat profile is gonna handle underexposure much better than overexposure. And speaking of profiles, anyone remember MySpace? Just kidding, but that means this next test, we'll be doing the same thing, but in Vlog. And again, to reiterate, the base ISO for Vlog is 250, but in the D-range boost mode, it's a hefty 2000, which is where I shot this test. And also this test is metered at a level exposure in camera. Let me know what your MySpace homepage song was in the comment section. Starting with underexposure again, one stop came back with absolutely no issues. Two stops under also came back perfect, but there's just a little bit of extra noise left over in the shadows. All right, three stops under, we're still doing okay levels wise, like everything's where it's supposed to be technically and nothing's lost, but you can tell things are just starting to really fall apart here now. The noise is building, color is just getting a lot less true. The sharpness is suffering, just poor image fidelity starting to happen. Four stops under that noise is really, really bad. And at this point it's getting like blotchy and even starting to leave artifacts like this streak here at the bottom. Although again, in terms of my levels here, they are right on, but all that information lost in these shadow areas when you bring it back makes for a pretty rough looking recovery. And at five stops, this video is pretty badly broken. You can just see the magenta chroma noise is really getting out of hand. And I had to walk a super fine line of saturation here for this one where I had to desaturate those magentas, but I couldn't let it cross over into my face. It was just really messy. And as for Vlog overexposure, and if you're already thinking that this is going to work out really well, you're pretty much right because we're overexposing log, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. So one stop over, nothing to be said, absolutely perfect. It looks debatably even better, more high fidelity than the quote unquote correctly exposed image in the middle. Two stops over, also literal perfection, recovered perfectly. Three stops also came back like a charm. I'm having to fight some hue shift going on here, nothing severe, nothing I can't handle, just had to get a little green into my face values, but that's really it, otherwise perfect. At four stops, we are finally starting to see some info loss in those highlights, but it's pretty much only contained to that hot spot right there on my forehead and nose. Everything else kinda came back to normal, but at this point, what you do get back is just kind of like muddled and lossy. The colors get much more ambiguous and they're just gonna be much harder to work with than if they had been properly exposed. And finally, at five stops overexposed, we have tons of info loss here. The majority of my face, along with basically all of the highlight points in the back, are totally gone. And what's left is really tough to work with. Pretty much all that recovers are like my black shirt and anything in like the mostly shadowy area. The paint on the backdrop looks decent here, but this is broken. And that is pretty much gonna do it on this video, testing out the Lumix GH6's ISO performance and exposure recovery. We saw how it did when we over and underexposed 
the living daylights out of it. It's actually an aperture 120D set to 5600 Kelvin. Anyways, if you have any questions about how the GH6 handled those tests or that dynamic range boost mode, you know what to do. Drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, me too. You can let me know that you liked it by hitting that little thumbs up button down by the description. And also, if you haven't already, what is taking you so long? Hit that subscribe button. We are barreling close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone. Every single sub helps. Thank you very much. And if you are already subscribed, you can hit that little bell button that's next to the subscribe button. That'll keep you in the loop whenever we post new content, which is every week. So people, believe everything you hear on the internet. Take it easy.